EUS guided fistulotomy has recently become a fairly routine procedure. However, its application to the ureter has not been reported. Here, we describe our experience with EUS guided ileoureterostomy for recurrent pyelonephritis caused by right ureteral stenosis. This procedure overcame failed initial attempts to pass a percutaneous guide wire. Our patient is an 80 year old male with history of pelvic accentuation, ideal conduit, and colostomy for rectal cancer in 2015. There was no recurrence of the cancer. However, six months later, he was complicated with recurrent pyelonephritis due to right ureteral stenosis, which subsequently required a right percutaneous nephrostomy. Several attempts to internalize a stent percutaneously were unsuccessful. The patient had an external fistula that had remained in place for a long period. We therefore attempted EUS guided ileoureterostomy with the aim of improving the quality of life of this patient. A balloon catheter was inserted percutaneously and advanced to just proximal to the ureteral stenosis. Then, a forward viewing EUS scope was inserted gradually from the ileostoma and advanced to the ileoconduit. This was performed under fluoroscopic guidance. As we can see in these EUS images, the position of the inflated ureteral balloon could be well visualized. However, on insertion of the 19 gauge FNA needle, the balloon immediately ruptured, and it was subsequently difficult to pass a 0.025 inch guide wire into the ureter. The ureter was also not adequately dilated and very mobile, adding to the difficulty of guide wire introduction into the ureter. Therefore, a basket forceps was used instead. These are the EUS images, clearly showing four linear hyperechoic lesions, which represent the basket forceps. And using the Saldinger technique, the ureteral wall was punctured by a 19 gauge FNA needle. Fluoroscopic imaging confirmed the puncture of the ureteral wall, and a guide wire was subsequently inserted. The basket forceps was then used to grasp the guide wire pulling it through to the side of the nephrostomy. The tract was then dilated with a 6mm balloon and a pigtail catheter was inserted to create an internal fistula. Internal fistulation was completed and the percutaneous nephrostomy was then closed. This procedure has subsequently improved this patient's quality of life. These are the technical highlights of the procedure. I believe the success of this procedure relies on two important technical aspects. First, forward viewing EUS is vital to maneuver the endoscope through a tortuous ileum. Second, using a basket catheter via percutaneous nephrostomy to grasp the guide wire inserted with EUS guidance is more effective than using a balloon because it easily ruptured on insertion of the FNA needle. Up to now, the only treatment options for post ileal conduit severe ureteral stenosis are external drainage or even surgical correction. Forward viewing EUS guided ileal ureterostomy is a novel option for refractory ureteral stenosis after ileal conduit diversion, especially in cases when the guide wire cannot pass through the tight stenosis. Although such condition is not frequently encountered, we should keep this novel technique in mind to help resolve the limitations of a percutaneous procedure and ultimately improve the patient's quality of life.